at the movies. Revisit the movie theaters and drive-ins of Saskatoon's past through photographs from the local history room. Photographic memories of theaters such as the Capitol, Daylight, Tivoli, and Victoria remind us of an era that has almost completely vanished. Although sadly most of Saskatoon's early theaters have disappeared, this photographic exhibition reminds us of a time when going to the movies was a special experience. The Empire Theatre, adjoining the Empire Hotel at 2nd Avenue and 20th Street East, was constructed as a large opera house and was decorated as such. Joseph Sutton had hired the Ar Virginia architectural firm of Story and Van Eggman to design his theatre. Construction was completed in a record three months, with the ground opening on December 29, 1910. Home to Saskatoon's playgoing and music-loving public, the Empire Theatre played a vital part in the cultural life of the city. Renovations to the theatre in 1918 permitted more frequent showings of films. A blizzard delayed the grand opening of the King Edward Theatre until February 8, 1911. The opening was postponed because of the non-arrival of the performers Howland Walsh, Howland and Company. The new theatre had been erected by Charles Rogers adjoining the King Edward Hotel on 20th Street West. It guaranteed the best vaudeville shows as well as the world's latest pictures. The entrance and the theatre itself brilliantly illuminated with electric lights. At night, when lit up, the King Edward Theatre was the most striking attraction on 20th Street West. After operating three months, the King Edward closed and reopened as the Orpheum. By mid-March 1912, the theatre disappears. Built in 1911 at a cost of $10,000, the Avenue Theatre was a single-story red brick structure immediately adjoining the King George Hotel on 2nd Avenue North. In addition to the theatre, the building contained the offices of the Saskatchewan Investment and Trust Company. When it opened in 1912, it was managed by Wilfred Underhill, with Harold and Lozar Underhill employed as ushers. By mid-1913, the theatre was under different management, and its name had been changed to the Rex Theatre. Another management change would happen before the theatre's demise in 1915. The West Side Theatre opened in August 1912 at the corner of Avenue C and 20th Street. The theatre was described as a clean, cosy, well-ventilated amusement house. Originally opened as a partnership between Thomas F. Kavanaugh and Daniel J. Sandy, Kavanaugh would run the theatre until 1915, when Lester Lozar became manager. By 1917, the West Side Theatre had closed. The Sutherland Press described the Pennant Theatre as a nice, cool place to spend an hour. Ladies and children were especially welcome and no picture would be shown that could possibly offend. When Edward Kidd opened the pennant in 1912, it was Sutherland's only public place of amusement. In addition to silent films, other events were held there. Lyle Gustin staged an early piano recital there in 1914. Originally a barber, Edward Kidd would return to his trade when the pennant theatre closed in 1918. When it opened in 1912, the Daylight Picture Theatre at 231 22nd Street East was the largest of Saskatoon's early movie houses, with seating for 987 people. Construction of the theatre was the result of a partnership between Newt Byers and James Butler, whose real estate business was located nearby. The Daylight was managed by Frank Miley, with William Overall as usher. To attract business, they staged events such as an all-female orchestra to accompany the pictures. In 1914, the largest program of pictures ever projected in Saskatoon happened when the daylight ran an eight-reel show.
On the evening of Wednesday, October 2, 1912, the Strand Theatre on 20th Street East near 3rd Avenue officially opened. Owned by Paul Sommerfeld, the 750-seat theatre also had a top floor for business offices. The design of architect Frank P. Martin featured walls of variegated brown pressed brick and imitation marble Corinthian pillars. The balcony had four or five private boxes large enough to accommodate parties of six. French doors and handsome mosaic work made for an imposing structure. A tea and sandwich buffet, as well as a candy store, were novel features at the opening. Joe Petrosino, the New York City police officer from the Italian squad, battles organized crime in the silent film playing at the Victoria. In 1912, J. A. Robillard and H. Harris, former owners of the Bijou, leased land from Dr. P. D. Stewart to build a theater on Second Avenue. Modeled on the style of the Orpheum in San Francisco, the $25,000 Victoria Theater opened in 1913. The theater was not equipped for vaudeville, but prospered during the silent era. Prudence the Pirate opened the New Daylight Theater at 136 Second Avenue South at 1 o'clock, New Year's Day, 1917. J. Lester Kaufman of the Regal Film Corporation, one of a number of prominent men in the motion picture business in town to inspect the new theater, declared the daylight the finest strictly motion picture theater in Canada. The theater was constructed for the Daylight Theater Company Limited at a cost of approximately $50,000. The interior of the Daylight Theater was originally likely designed by the architectural firm of Thompson, Daniels, and Coulters. In the fall of 1929, the Daylight closed and reopened October 23rd with its auditorium, stage, and screen equipped for sound. A fire in the Daylight Apartments in 1931 resulted in additional interior renovations. Beatrice Wood, in the summer sailor uniform worn by Roxy Theatre usherettes, stands in front of the theatre with assistant manager Elliot Brown. Beatrice Wood worked as an usherette at the Roxy from 1932 until 1939. Winnipeg theatre owner Nate Rothstein would hire a Winnipeg architect, Fred Lemaistre, to design the Saskatoon Roxy Theatre at 320 20th Street West. Built in 1930, the Roxy was Saskatoon's second atmospheric theatre built in the Spanish Villa style. It resembled the Yorkton Roxy Theatre building built by Rothstein in 1928. With its blue sky and twinkling stars, the Roxy Theatre was a magical landmark on Saskatoon's west side. The new Tivoli Theatre, under the ownership of H. A. Morton, opened August 1, 1930. Rebuilt out of the old Victoria Theatre, the renovated theatre was a talkie house, equipped with the last word in sound screens and a ventilation system to make the building one of the city's coolest. The architect in charge of the changes was David Webster. He designed the theatre's attractive Moorish front and marquee with decorative iron balconies manufactured by the John East Ironworks. As the original Tivoli motto said, spell it backwards. May 11, 1929, opening night at the Capitol Theatre, featured Saskatoon's first sound film with Nancy Carroll and Buddy Rogers in close harmony. Toronto architect Murray Brown had designed the building and its Spanish architecture, with Saskatoon architect David Webster responsible for carrying out his plans and specifications. The Capitol was Saskatoon's first atmospheric theatre. Described as a $400,000 palace of splendour, its high standard of elegance and luxuriousness made the Capitol Saskatoon's most beautiful theatre.
The front of the Capitol Theatre on Second Avenue gave little hint of the splendor within. The long hall and the stairway that led to the spacious anteroom that bridged the Second Avenue alley across to the auditorium were grand. The elaborate arches, velvet hangings, chandeliers, decorative ironwork, in fact all of the decoration, was supervised or executed by the artist Emmanuel Briffa. Resembling a vast square somewhere in Spain, with quaint houses furnished with awnings hung on brackets of iron spear points, the auditorium of the Capitol Theatre could comfortably seat sixteen hundred people in upholstered leather seats, two hundred of which were in the balcony. This wartime audience fills the theatre to capacity. Visible behind the window of the little Spanish house at the back of the balcony is projectionist Alan Arnold. Capitol Theatre staff are posed at the First Avenue door to the theatre in their uniforms. When the Capitol opened in 1929, the theatre manager was Frank Miley and the assistant manager was Reginald Plum. The head usher was H. Carlisle Ewell. Alexander Scotty McKay and Art Howard are two of the other ushers identified. The other usher and two young ladies are unidentified, but may be cashiers Ruby Naylor and Marjorie Littlejohn. A poster advertising Cecil B. DeMille's 1938 film, The Buccaneer, is displayed on this hoarding located near the Technical Collegiate. This adventure romance starring Frederick March and Francisca Gall played at the Roxy Theatre. Saskatoon movie theatres frequently advertise their films on various billboards and hoardings in the city. With every one of the 700 seats occupied, and the standing room at the back filled, the new Nutana Broadway was officially opened on December 5, 1946. This fireproof, reinforced concrete and steel modernist building was designed by George Forrester with the Webster and Gilbert architectural firm. When it opened, the Broadway Theatre boasted one of the largest neon marquees on the prairies. Otto Preminger's detective drama, Where the Sidewalk Ends, was playing at the Daylight Theatre in 1950. Essentially unchanged since its opening in 1917, the front of the building, including the doors and the marquee, would be remodeled by famous players in 1966. With the facelift would come a name change. The Daylight Theatre became the Paramount Theatre. In conjunction with the 1951 film Elephant Stampede, the sixth movie in the Bomb of the Jungle Boy series, the Roxy stage a promotion. Children lined up outside the theatre for the film with the debonair planter's figure Mr. Peanut. Mr. Peanut was played by Roxy employee Ed Harluck, who offered free prizes and treats inside. The Skyway Drive-In was situated on the east side of Avenue A North opposite the airport. When it opened in June 1953, it was Saskatoon's third drive-in theatre and the first on the west side of the river. The Skyway Drive-In was equipped to accommodate over 600 in-car speakers, making it one of Canada's largest outdoor theatres. Enjoy movies in your car, the Skyway Drive-In Theatre proclaimed, but it also advertised indoor seating for non-car owners or for those who preferred the ordinary style of seating. In addition to a cafeteria-style concession and projection booth, the building had indoor accommodation for over 60 patrons, be they cyclists or the casual wanderer on foot. Nelson Warner, manager of the Roxy Theatre, stands at the entrance to the crying room. In January 1960, 
The Roxy became one of the theatres in the city with a room where mothers of fretful infants could sit and watch movies without embarrassment. The Roxy also became the second film house in the city to offer patrons smoking privileges in balcony seats. Beatlemania came to Saskatoon on August 28, 1964. By nine o'clock, some 100 youngsters had lined Second Avenue in front of the Tivoli Theatre in anticipation of the first showing of A Hard Day's Night. By 10.30, their numbers had increased and the line stretched from the door of the theatre to the corner of 21st Street. Clutching their Beatle pictures and magazines and chanting, yeah, 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 these Beatle fans outside the Tivoli Theatre have skipped school to make sure they would see John, Paul, George and Ringo. The Beatles made a film, which meant they weren't at the Tivoli in person, the Star Phoenix reviewer said. They might as well have been. After all, the jelly th beans the kids threw at the screen Friday afternoon were meant for them and not for the screen. Buckstone County Prison was part of a triple bill which included Jennifer and the Chosen at the Sutherland Park Drive-In in September 1978. Gates at the drive-in opened at 8 o'clock and the show began at dusk. Plans for the drive-in had been drawn up in 1949 when the Sutherland Town Council sold some 20 acres of land to famous players. When the Sutherland Park Drive-In Theatre opened on J July 21, 1950, it was the province's largest drive-in, constructed for 500 automobiles. We hope you enjoyed this adaptation of At The Movies. The original show was held from February 3rd to 26th, 2009 in the Francis Morrison Gallery, curated by Ron Jeremko with the assistance of Local History Room staff. We invite you to visit the Local History Room the next time you are at the Francis Morrison Central Library.